Fernando Tatis Jr. has tested positive for COVID-19. Two other players, Jerickson Profar and Jorge Mateo, have also been placed on the injured list with Tatis. News 8 Sports Director Kyle Kraska joins us early tonight with the latest. Kyle? Yeah, it's been such a strange season for Fernando Tatis Jr. Ups and downs. He signs a $340 million contract before the season begins. And then once it does begin, he has struggles offensively, defensively, suffers a left shoulder subluxation. And then the news today from his manager, Jace Tingler, telling the media that Tatis has tested positive for COVID-19. Now the good news here and the most important news is that he is asymptomatic and he's feeling well. Fernando has been placed on the injured list along with Jerks and Profar and Jorge Mateo, the latter two being sidelined due to contact tracing. Now, according to Major League Baseball's COVID protocols, players must isolate for at least 10 days after a positive test, but any player who is vaccinated can return sooner if he receives two negative tests. Here's Tingler earlier today. Mentally, he's he's crushed. He wants to be there with the guys. He wants to play. He wants to, uh, you know, be be a part of it. So I think it's you know right now it's a little bit more, uh, you know, mental. I think he feels, um, you know, like it's it, it's as uh, soon as he starts to get some momentum going one way, there's been a small setback here or there, and uh, it sucks. It sucks going through. Uh as far as the Padres are concerned, they are in Colorado tonight, just underway with the Colorado Rockies, game one of a three-game series. Uh, interesting side note, guys, that uh, also today testing positive former Padre slugger Phil Nevin. He is the third base coach of the New York Yankees, and it's reported that Phil Nevin was fully vaccinated, and yet he got the virus, at least tested positive for it today. All right, thanks for that update. Kyle. Yeah, we'll hope they're well, and all the strangeness is at the start of the season for the Padres. Yeah, smooth sailing right. after Hopefully this. it smooths out at this point. Good thanks, Kyle. No symptoms. The Royal Australian Navy ship HMAS Sydney pulled into San Diego over the weekend with two dead whales stuck under the ship. It appears the vessel hit the whales on their way into San Diego after docking at the naval base. The carcasses floated to the surface. Right now, the carcasses are being towed out to sea, and a lot of questions are being asked. Here's News 8's Heather Hope. Marine biologists are calling this highly rare. It's already disturbing enough to see one large fin whale being lodged at the bottom of a ship, but to have two fin whales they say is highly uncommon. It is very unusual. I don't know of any other case where two whales have been, <clears throat> you know, struck and on the bow of a ship together like this. It's difficult for some to watch one of two dead fin whales being towed out to sea after being hit by an Australian Navy ship. NOAA Fisheries is assisting with the carcass removal as scientists work to determine what happened. Usually occurs when the whale is at the surface, the ship unaware the whale is there just basically runs into them. And it can either be struck by the bow of the vessel or sometimes they're caught and injured by the propeller. Finwell expert John Kalambokides of Cascadia Research in Washington studies ship strikes like this one that took place Saturday around 9.45 a.m. when the Royal Australian Navy ship HMAS Sydney was berthing alongside Naval Base San Diego and discovered two deceased whales dislodged from the bottom of the ship. We will be at the sea point inbound for Naval Base San Diego at 0830. Over. San Diego webcam shows the day it happened as two fin whales believed to be mother and calf were hit below. A statement from the Australian Department of Defense reads, the U.S. Navy and the Royal Australian Navy are cooperating with NOAA Fisheries and other agencies to review the incident. The Navy takes marine mammal safety seriously and is disheartened by the incident that occurred. It was a real team effort to get the ship to this point where it's been delivered to Sydney. The HMAS Sydney is the last of the three ships of the Hobart class guided missile destroyers constructed in Australia for maritime security. A naval base San Diego spokesperson says it's been here since April. It would be valuable and important for the Navy to be paying more attention to, but the bigger problem probably is the larger commercial cargo ships. A spokesperson for Naval Base San Diego says after that larger 65 foot long fin whale is being removed from the base that the smaller 25 foot long fin whale carcass could be removed either later today or tomorrow. Heather Hope, News 8. Thanks, Heather. Governor Gavin Newsom is proposing $12 billion to help fight the state's homelessness crisis. He unveiled the plan here in San Diego this morning. He's looking to expand the existing Operation Home Key program, which allows cities across the state to buy and transform hotels and motels into housing units for unsheltered people. Newsom wants to use $9 billion to create thousands more.
This is not just doubling down on strategies that we know work. This is an order of magnitude. The rest of the money proposed, more than $3 billion, will go toward rental support and other services to fight homelessness over the next five years. Local businessman and candidate for Governor John Cox made a campaign stop here in San Diego County today. Cox is running amid a crowded field of candidates challenging Governor Gavin Newsom in a recall set to take place this fall. Local animal rights activists spoke out today against his use of a bear on the campaign trail. My friend Tag and I are here today to, to demonstrate that we're going to have to make the, the beastly changes to make this state affordable and livable again. It's sad and it, it, I just don't feel it's the way to win a political campaign. The Lions, Tigers and Bears Sanctuary in Alpine says it's offered the Cox campaign a tour of its facility while he, the campaign is here in San Diego. Tonight, county officials are reporting just 125 new COVID-19 cases. That's just 1% of the latest 10,000 tests. Coronavirus hospitalizations increased by four for a total of 156. The number of patients in the ICU with COVID-related complications went up by one to 46. No new deaths were reported today. 3,725 people have died from the virus here in San Diego County. More than 1.7 million San Diegans have received at least one dose of the vaccine. More than 1.2 million are now fully vaccinated. The captain of the boat that crashed off Point Loma in an alleged human smuggling operation earlier this month, resulting in three deaths, appeared in federal court today. Antonio Hurtado is facing charges of attempted smuggling and assault on a federal officer. In today's detention hearing, Hurtado agreed to waive his right to a speedy trial oh. while remaining in federal custody. He's due back for arraignment on May 27th. An Imperial Beach man is heartbroken after he says someone broke into his home, trashed the place, and stole his French bulldog. Armando Ora says Layla was taken sometime between 9 and 11 Sunday morning while he was away at work. He says whoever broke in didn't take any other valuables, just his priceless companion. Um, I've been having her since she was a baby, three years. And I'm just really devastated. I just I can't even grasp. I can't even think really um, what's going on. Ora says he's willing to pay more than $1,000 if necessary to get Layla back. If you see the dog or any sign of her, please contact authorities. Body cam video can make or break a case in court. With today's tech, the public has come to expect the proof of what really happened to be in the video and for it to come out quickly. But the law leaves police departments with a lot of room for interpretation. News 8's Jesse Pagan breaks down what the law says you're allowed to see and when. And we want to warn you, some of the video on this can be disturbing. Steven, I'm going to shoot you. In the age of tech, Drop video right of now. police encounters and use of force involving law enforcement can be critical. Law enforcement leaders like Escondido Police Chief Ed Varso agree. Body cam footage is very valuable. But we also understand that body camera footage doesn't necessarily share every detail. Chief Varso gave the green light to release video of one of his officers shooting and killing 59-year-old homeless man Stephen Olson in April. The department says Olson approached the officer with a pipe in hand, even after warnings. Advocates say Olson wasn't a threat. Officer Moore has used these. The video published by the department was not the raw footage. It was edited. Olson's body was blurred and voiceover commentary was added. For that purpose, it's more than just sharing raw body cam footage. It's also about sharing what else we know. Varso says the goal was to explain more of what they knew, things you may not see in the video, like the department's other run-ins with Olson and why the officer ultimately decided to shoot. It's perfectly permissible for the department to do that. California law gives agencies 45 days to release body cam video as they investigate the case, but they can continue to push it off every 30 days. Given they can prove releasing it will hurt the case more than help and can do that for up to a year. When they really have to meet a, a high standard for uh, not disclosing, which is called clear and convincing. Gibson says as long as departments aren't deliberately misleading the public, they're acting within the law. And since all of us now have cameras in our pockets, many agencies are pushing to get ahead of the curb. Kept waiting for 
the de-escalation tactics. Obviously, they, they use other de-escalation tactics. At the time of the shooting, advocates criticized the department and pushed for the release of the footage. Law enforcement's under a lot of scrutiny, um, and we are continuously trying to find ways to to bridge those gaps. Chief Varso acknowledges police is at the center of a nationwide conversation on race and abuse of power. He says putting out as much information as possible is one way his department is trying to resolve it. Now, aside from the California state statutes, several law enforcement agencies have their own local policies on how they handle body cam footage. For example, San Diego's Pol single police's 16 page policy on how the camera should be used is right on their website. The district attorney's office is still investigating that Escondido shooting. Carlo, Marcelo.